Hello, my name is Will. And I'm Nathan. And we are a Rocket Complex. Today we have something really, really cool for you. Um, we are going to be doing our first ever director's commentary, I guess. So usually we do a video after each music video that sums up the production and we talk about specific things that we liked or didn't like. Today's one is going to be a lot more long form um, and probably not very edited. Um, because we're trying more things along the lines of content instead of the heavily produced stuff uh, so that we can get them out quicker. So, hooray! Um, let's give this a try. So, Nate, let's talk about the pre-production of Freshen Up first. Is this you? Are we talk right? Okay. <laughs> this was I was doing a very good pen and teller impression. Now you were doing you were pen doing all the I talking, was, and yeah. I was teller. I was thinking I was thinking about this. What if we were like you know like um, Penn and Teller are like the duo in the Magic World. Uh, Jay and Silent Bob are the duo in the Film World. What if we were the duo in the Music World? Have you not heard of Wham? <laughs> <laughs> well, some of our pictures got compared to that. So careful, like. Oh yeah, because we've got mics on either side here. So, um, first off for pre-production is, with anything, we kind of came up with the song, the concept, it was more based on the song. So like, why don't we talk about the production of the song as well? That'd be fun. So, yeah. Um, Nate, how did this all start? And whose fault is it? Because it's yours. So, uh, we, were, we were out one night, and... Uh, we, we we were in a uh, pub. Is it a pub? It's a pub. It's a pub. Don't call it out by name. I think. Uh, I'm not going to call it by name. And it, it was a night we remember fondly because yeah. we were having a discussion and Will pretty much said that Ghost, as in the band Ghost, yeah. but were the scorpions in yeah. disguise. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I can see it. And that they are just the scorpions. You never see them in the same place at the same time. Which you don't. And we had a few drinks that night. And was it the following day? It, well, it, it was on that night. Oh, on the night, sorry. On that night when it was just me and Nate out and obviously he needs to go to the bathroom during the night and then we encountered, it was our encounter with one of those guys and it was it was not as dramatic as the song. It was, he was quite pushy and quite wanted to uh, sell his services and wares mm -hmm. and all we wanted to do was go to the bathroom and then wash our hands uh, and we went individually and both had kind of the same experience and it was like and then it wasn't on that night that we said oh we should write a song about it it was like we actually were just like oh that's weird and then had a couple of drinks and then yeah. went on with our day um, then we went home and it was the next day and as we were in we were producing uh, the final bits of writing for But This Time With Passion, mm -hmm. for the new EP. Um, and I got a text from Nate. And it's just like, we were like, oh, should we do a fourth song? Because we were originally going to do a cover on the EP itself. But it was like, oh, well, if we did a fourth song, what would it be? And so, Nate, as a challenge, text me what? It wasn't so much a challenge. It was more of a, a, a joke that kind of... <laughs> that went too far. We've made it this far. <laughs> We've made a song and a music video. Yeah. Um, of, well... <laughs> of the guy. Of the guy, yeah, yeah. Let's make a song about it, pretty much. Yeah. So you, you text me being like, well, what What if we wrote a song about that? So I was just like, it was like, challenge accepted. Give me <laughs> give me a couple of days. And so I had this funk riff um, that we had been playing around with for ages. It was like a funk jam that mm. we'd just been jamming out. Um, and I was just like over the top of it playing and then somehow I landed on a chord and just said the words no I don't want your lollipop and then that was the first bit that was written it was like holy crap this is what we need to do so I didn't have anything to show Nate other than a, a little bit of the chorus yep. a little bit of the verse and I picked you up one day I, I started I, singing it in the car to you. Well, I remember it funny because you actually played it through your phone. Yeah. Um, for your auxiliary cable or whatever yeah. it was at the time. And this was when I was still having physio and stuff. This is when I'd, you know, pretty much had to give up drums for, for a while. Which we never talked about as a thing. Um, no, yeah. we haven't. I had to yeah. give up drums. <laughs> it's a, a very, very quick anecdote. Yeah. 
Um, I pretty much have to give up jumps for the best part of two years because I have very, very bad knees. Yeah. Uh, and I remember Will picking me up once, and this was during that time, so I was all like my shorts, strapped up, whatever. And he played me this this groove, and I was like, oh my god, that is amazing. This is seriously really cool. And then he started singing it, and that's when it clicked what song it was, <laughs> and that he had actually written, you know, part of yeah. Freshen Up. And the rest is history. Yeah. So Fresh Nut was the it's the most recent song we've written. We have three others to come out this year. Yep. Um, and that it was um it was really interesting us bringing out Fresh Nut first because we thought Fresh Nut was so good that we were like, well, it's fresh off the presses, kind of. Let's let's roll with that. Yeah. So we then went into the studio. We went to Old Blacksmiths in Hilsey, um, in Portsmouth. Great Great place. Um, Old Blacksmith Studios, and we worked with our producer, um, Ben uh, Whitney. Uh, he is a f- absolutely fabulous producer. He is. Um, he drew some great stuff out of us. Yeah. On And kept us in check, because um, also whilst Nate was having um, Fizzy on his knees, I was trying to mix the three songs we already had. Um, and as we tur- it turned out, like, I can't write and mix... I think I'm, I get too close and I get too anal about stuff and I get too, like, in, like, with it. It, yeah. it breaks my head. So for my own mental health, we decided to go to a studio because it, even though we could, we can record here and get a pretty good result, we're like, let, let's let's pay and go to a studio because I think that's really good. Yeah, also it's good to have an outside, like a third pair of ears. Yeah, because we definitely need it. When, we're, um, when it's just us two, we do need an additional opinion. Yeah. Um, because obviously, when it's two of us, sometimes we agree 100% and know exactly where we're both going. But sometimes there's other decisions that need to be kind of talked out and worked out. Um, like there's one part in Freshen Up after the you being here is not fine. Yeah. Where I'm literally just like on the symbol like that. And I was like, I'd never do that. And it's one thing I've sort of hated a little bit. Yeah. It just like, it, it just sounds like noise. But then yeah, there's like, a breakdown. Ben was like, just do it I'm like what he's like just do it yeah. I'm like oh okay and it's, it sounds amazing it really fits it really works yeah. and that wouldn't have happened had he not been there no oh, yeah exactly and it's um it's also like he prioritizes the song above all else yeah which is as instrumentalists it's really easy to get lost in your take in your recording in your moment and this specific instrument's arrangement for, like, a part. And so Ben would often, as I was playing, like, all the different instruments, um, obviously apart from drums, uh, Ben would go, that bit doesn't fit with this bit. Can we change this performance? Can we change this chord here? Yeah. Um, And that was really, really useful for us. And a lot of people, a lot of musicians, aren't happy with some, you know, this is the way I play it. You can't, this is my song, not yours. Goodbye, good day, you know. Yeah. Whereas you've got to have an open mind and an open opinion because if someone can come in from an outside perspective and just be like, look, sounds cool, however, it doesn't really fit, I think it could work better this way, it could open your mind to something completely different and you could be like, actually, no, he is right, or, you know, I do prefer it that way. Yeah. Same with having friends, you know, you're going to have, like, I I have a friend, she's a drummer, great drummer, and I actually sent her some demos, well, the demos of the EP, and mm. I was like, hey, what do you think? And she's like, yeah, they're great. And then I was like, cool, do you have any notes to add to that? And she, she actually she wrote gave you a whole page. a whole page of notes, and I was just like, <laughs> okay, wasn't well, expecting that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, fair. No, and, and, you know, she has such a, a, a knowledge yeah. for drums as well, and, like, rudiments and shit, and, you know, fair play. Um, and there's stuff I learn from her constantly. Mm. So it's, it's like to have, to have an outside perspective. You're, you're constantly evolving. You've got an, it's an extra pair of ears. It's yeah. an extra. It's an extra brain. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly, man. I mean, okay, you can get to the whole part of you know too many cooks. And yeah, that that can happen pretty easily. But with this, if we never got to that in that sort of production. We don't ask too many people we keep it quite close to our chest when we're when we're working on stuff yeah so yeah and it's been like it was two years out and like for a lot of bands that's kind of standard when in between albums yeah with yeah. touring and etc but for this time there was um both health reasons and we were actively producing stuff but it just you know oh health reasons yeah it was sometimes where it just it, what i was doing wasn't working so we needed to move on and it was 
great that we did actually it was the right call yeah so um but then after we did that we immediately started working on this so this is the probably really blown out yeah <laughs> it's absolutely blown out looking at it on there um this is the um storyboard for the music video so the, it was one thing that we find really important now, i'll do some close-ups of this so you guys can see it when we're talking about it um but going through it, like we never do storyboards where they're like properly drawn 100% because it's a huge waste of time. It's more about getting your kind of thoughts onto the page of what kind of shots that you actually want on the yeah. set on the day. It's one of the tools that helps you generate a shot list, helps you get coalesce the ideas of what you want to have in, in happen in the music video. Um, just looking at this now, you can see what we, we kind wanted to of do. like. Yeah, you, you can see it. We changed a couple shots. I mean, yeah. in the first one, we look at it. But this is um, there's a phrase that I always say is you make a you make a movie three times, um, in pre-production, which is why this video is going to kind of be in three parts. Pre-production, when you're on set, when and during the production, and in post, you make different decisions. Yeah. Um, then so yeah it was decisions like we've said on this first frame here that we wanted to have a pan down but actually when we were on set we found that we found this really really nice movement across that mm -hmm. showed the whole bar but it it was from like behind like a dishwasher kind of area and it showed the whole bar and revealed us really nicely as a side pan um, instead of like a tilt down. So we had originally uh, written here for a tilt down, though I wrote pan, which is really bad, bad of me. Um, and then we wrote the whole first scene of like the back and forth in the bar saying, I'm going to go to the bathroom and walk off. Though looking at this, we were the other way around and the bar was here. Well, technically, as you look at it on the camera, we're yeah. we are still in the same, so I'm on the... If you look at it from yeah, the, we're still framed on the right side. Yeah. We just put the bar at the wrong the, place in the shot. Yeah. So we became the bar. Yeah, we did. But well, we didn't know which orientation it was going to be. That was one of the things we had originally planned. We'll get into this when we get into production, but the, it, we had to change location. And I think that's really interesting is um, this music video, like the song, all the production of the song went really, really well, but this music video was hell. Like, yeah. it. There was a lot of bad stuff that happened, not in pre-production, that uh, happened no, during was... production. <laughs> a few so days. when we were on set, so there was a few extremely stressful days. But let's um, let's let's talk about this some more. I'm just going to flip through the the kind of thing here. So we we did all we did all of these shots. Show it pan, the um, I put pan there again. I should put tilt, um, tilt up of the guy at the bar, mm -hmm. and slider across showing all of the uh, his wares on the yep. sink side even had the um, crash zoom in because I, I'm, I'm inspired by uh, Tarantino and that's something that he does in Django. Um, Still hasn't seen Kill Bill though. I haven't. I need to get around to that. But I loved I loved Django so it was like right we're gonna, gonna look for that. And then we were we had originally written in this that we were definitely gonna have two different scenes or two different locations. We're gonna have the bar location and then we were gonna have the photo shoot location. Uh, yeah. And we had originally written in here that it was going to be both me and you in the photo shoot location doing ha. the song. Yeah. But we made the decision again in I production that. that it was going to be the guy. And oh, I mostly yeah, yeah. remember why we made that decision. It was because you were tired <laughs> and you didn't want it anymore. Can you blame me? No, I can't blame you. That's the thing. I can't blame you. Because by the end of this, we were so fucking shattered. Like I was so. We, how many we had? I sweared that I shouldn't have swore, but oh. we. I, I sweared. Sorry. Um, so for, for for the bar scene, sorry. Yeah. Um, I managed to get one day off work, but then the second day I had to go in after, like so. Yeah. On, on the second day, so we'd done a whole day of filming. Yeah. And then I, I'm up, uh, you know, ridiculously early anyway. And then I had to go to my previous job where I was working nights. Yeah. So it was literally music video, shoot that all day, go to bed at some point in, yeah. the, in that time get frame. Up. Get up. Do the, the shoot, then go to work, finish work, go to bed. Then I think it was, literally, then we like the following day we were at the. It's, yeah. So how we did um, it? The uh, shoot for the studio, like yeah. the guy in the you know, oh, a bit. No, yeah. No. So Which, we oh. we had one one day of production, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. I'm just, I'm just going to see. We're we're almost to production, I think. Uh, there there isn't any shots that we had originally intended. Like looking through our storyboard, 
There isn't any shots that we originally intended that didn't make it in the video, other than we changed who was going to be in there. <laughs> Uh, well, that's supposed to be confetti. <laughs> but then I, I said we would do a much more closer shot, and so we changed that on the day because we mm. tried so many different things with the cologne bottles. Um, and then getting into the band playing and stuff. We had the walk-in, but we did it from side of screen, is what right. we've written here, yeah, yeah. instead of walking past the camera. But I think the decision to make it walk past the camera was way better. It, it looks cool. It looks yeah, really cool. it looked really cool. So, yeah, looking at it, <laughs> then it says ban shots till end, step two, <laughs> profit, question mark. <laughs> but, yeah, that's that's all of our storyboards. So looking at it, there wasn't anything that really kind of stood out as um, we had a massively different plan. It was all just small sort of tweaks God. that we went to. Sorry about that. I opened that right next to the microphone. My bad. Uh, do you want me to confiscate that? Yeah, you can confiscate that, then I'm not going to touch it anymore and play with it. But yeah. So, um, with pre-production out of the way, and we took a couple days to do that. I think we went to Wagamama's at some point. I remember being in Wagamama's and drawing out the um, yeah the things. Drawing the thing out. Yeah. And then sometimes on, um, if we're not sure about if something's going to work, um, like pacing-wise, we'll make an animatic. So I'll take a, um, a scan of every one of the shots that we've kind of drawn um, in the storyboard, and then I'll put them in a timeline on Final Cut or any sort of editor, and time them to the song to kind of feel out, is this what we really want? Are we gonna change some shots here? And then we'll generate the final shot list of what shots we actually need, and then we get into scheduling. So scheduling for this was really, really simple. We already knew that we wanted to shoot all of the band stuff first. So, because we knew you had on, you could only get one day off, mm -hmm. so we had to shoot all of the instrument parts on the first day. On the first day, because we knew that was, that was the day we we're going to be the most tired. Yeah. And we had originally thought we were only going to be a certain level of tired because we had someone else doing the camera. But they bailed mm -hmm. the day before the shoot. Yeah. So that was that was problem number one. Problem number one coming in from production from pre-production into production and then the <laughs> the second major thing that went wrong is we lost our location mm -hmm. <laughs> um <clears throat> so we lost well we originally um, lost the location for because uh, i remember yeah I, yeah we did lose because we filmed it on a, 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 a wednesday thursday yeah. then the Photo shoot thing was the Friday. Yeah, yeah. And then Saturday as well. Friday yeah. and Saturday. So yeah. it was like it was four days. So I remember on the Monday being at work, you texted me saying, Nate, we've lost the location. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you're fucking kidding me. So I had to like, put out everywhere, does anyone know anywhere? And we got into some talks with a couple of different nightclubs, which didn't pan out for one reason or another. I will keep that as politically safe as I can um, but uh, we managed to find somewhere very quickly and it was Chloe who found it yeah. our lovely lovely partner Chloe she found a place that we could go to a very well known nightclub in Gosport called Emma's Nightclub and we must thank them so much yeah for saving us on the shoot at ex incredibly last minute yeah like they and, and they were lovely as well. Yeah, like everyone there, that great staff. Yeah, and the food looked amazing. It was great. It, yeah, it looked really good. It was fantastic. <laughs> but like when you, when you're in a location, that food looks amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. you know, because it's Emma's and Nel Nelson. Like, yeah, it's like the restaurant bar. Yeah, that ne bit. Nelson's is the pub. Emma's yeah. is the nightclub. Yeah. So we were we filmed in Emma's nightclub in Gosport. So so thank you to them. Thank but you um, so much. Uh, so then we what we couldn't figure out was who we could get to film. Now, all of our previous music videos, it's always been either me or Nate. Um, and the reason we wanted to avoid that this time was because it is, when you're doing story-based content like this, or like stuff where it's shot out, like doing the Return of the Mac video, music video is, let's just turn on the camera and see what we get. When we do a yeah. cover, it's not like we're really thinking out stuff, unless it's like there's one certain thing I want to play with, like cloning. Um, like something like that. I mean, it'll be interesting when we recreate girls just want to have fun. You know, and there's like <laughs> six different people, you know, and we have to, you know. 
I, we might do that as a cover. <laughs> we might do that. Someone suggested to me a cover the other day. Right. I'll so, tell you what, after this. Side note, that is actually one of my favourite songs of all time. It's like yeah, definitely it's top five. Written by a guy. I know. Yeah, it's, it's funny that. Cindy Lauper's not even the original version of it. Really not? Is it not? Uh, it's like a punk song. Oh, awesome. So, yeah. Fair. I don't know how that simplifies punk. Well, I, I got that's you, punk. Man. Yeah. It's more like bass, but... <laughs> bass punk. <laughs> bass punk. Um, um, so, so, yes, Chloe. Yeah. Chloe... Um, I asked her very nicely. I was like, could you come along and help with the music video? Because I bet we're going to need help if... Because we, we had originally tried to hire a camera person and it was in the case of hiring them. We had a yeah. budget for them. This wasn't a favor. Like, we're paying their day rate and they bailed. So, and at that last minute, they they'd bailed with two days to go to the shoot. I couldn't get a hold of any of my other filmmaking friends to be able to do the shoot um, in that time because everyone was busy. Um, and... At this point, it's like I don't really know who I can trust, so it's like we'll, we'll just have to do it ourselves again. And there's only so much that I can sort of do when I'm on a drum kit. Yeah, and there's only so much that I can do when I'm on the mic, or there's only so much that either of us could do when we're both in shot together. Yeah. So we had to ask Chloe very, very nicely. It's like, could you come along and help? And then um, I taught her a little bit about the camera, showed her kind of where the buttons were, um, and what to do, what the names for things were, because um, on on the day it was it was so stressful because everyone was wearing as many hats as they could. It was yeah. only the three of us, which meant they was like moving in. We were moving the lights everywhere, moving the camera. I was calling out like cinematography um, like choices and asking for different lenses and um, saying like moving the camera in between shots and then having to stand in shots, having you or Chloe stand in for me whilst I framed up or having you frame and stuff like that. We basically became bossy for four days. It, and I didn't want to do that. And I, I don't I don't want to do that. There's like... The, I don't like being bossy to my best friend and bandmate and obviously my girlfriend. That's not okay. I mean, I can't help being your girlfriend. Shut but, up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's hard. I, I, I know what it is hard when you're trying to get. You you are the cinematographer, I get that. Yeah. I, I do know a little bit. I can do quite a bit. Yeah, because we used to work together on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just sort of, as you say, when it's like two people in the same shot and it's kind of like, well, that camera's not going to move and that's going to look like a really static shot. Yeah. But we've got to ask and you have to ask really nicely and. Um, and be patient. And I hope I was as patient as I could. I mean, as stress goes higher, patience wears thin, and it's not a thing of anger or anything like that. It's It was just the fact that we were so hectic of like me being on camera, directing DOP, and doing the lights for each shot was like, I was ready to like explode by the end of <laughs> all of it. Yeah. So, but luckily somehow we pulled through those two like, I know a lot of productions that would have stopped and would have pulled and would have said, we're not doing this. But because Maybe. it was so difficult for you to get time off we, that, from that, that old job... We had, like, that time frame. We like, had to get any it. more time off. Yeah. And, you know, it, was, it had to be shot then. Yeah. So yeah, man. We, we did our best. Yeah. So we shot this in August, and that's why there's the obvious haircut change for Oh, yeah, I had a haircut. Yeah. It's a... Uh, well, t technically, it's all just tied back. Yeah, and, uh, of course, yeah. A big, big, fat pony with tail back there. No. Um, but uh, we made the decision because it was like, right, if we edit this now, we're going to be... Like, we had some other stuff, pre-release uh, pre stuff to sort out, like artwork and stuff. So it was several, several months before we could release. So the earliest possible that we could have released the music video would have been December. But we both agreed that was a dumb idea. And that, that's even... Because it was even late for that, you know. Yeah. We wanted to get out by December latest. Yeah. As in, we wanted the EP to be here. Well, technically, the first re the EP was recorded three times, by the way. Yeah, because, uh, like I said before about me me producing it here, we um, we decided the first go wasn't good enough, and then the second go was pretty good. No, no, the second time. Yeah. We discovered that the songs were all in the wrong keys. Oh yes, yeah, because I went to go sing them, which is um. This is, there's a lot of stuff, and why I really wanted to talk to you about this is because I want to do like a post mortem. This is kind of like just a post mortem for the whole process of like, what did we learn 
and what things are we definitely not doing ne next time. And one thing we didn't do for ages was I didn't. I was just singing the songs every time it was being mixed and just making sure it kind of still fit here and there instead of recording them in. Like, yeah. and I'm I'm not. I'm I'm comfortable saying this now as I was very like I've been a singer for years for such a long time but this time I got really nervous I got really scared of hearing my voice back and it's like I've been singing since I was 14 I'm 28 now so for some reason 14 years later I had a small little moment where I just couldn't face hearing my own voice for a while. And like I know, well, viewers probably won't know, but in my previous band I had a very severe vocal injury, um, which meant that I needed to take a month off of even being able to talk. I was really scared of pushing myself that hard again to be able to do it. And that's why he's never sang any Darkness song ever again. <laughs> No, I can do falsetto just fine. It's there, there's a point at the very very top of my head voice where I like uh, there's a passaggio as your gear change between your um, chest voice and head voice. There's a couple notes in there where I can lose my whole voice. I see. So uh, anyway. where was that on shoot? Yeah, I don't know, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, that was one of the things that I would like to do differently for next time is. Um, Obviously, when we're recording the demos, I will sing all of the lyrics onto them. Because it, mm -hmm. it, it tends it's to be the last thing that we do in our process. Yeah, lyrics always come last. Yeah. It's because the song, the music, and the instruments need to be good before the vocals. Because I feel like when you write vocals on their own, like you're kind of just shoving them. It's like a square peg in a round hole. Like You can make it fit somehow, but it's not the right... It, it just won't feel right. Um, so we always write them to the thing. So that was one big mistake we made. Um, in production, like I don't blame ourselves for anything on this music video. In fact, some of the shots in this are some of the best shots like we've ever done. Yeah. And they look absolutely fantastic. But there were a couple things I would have done differently. T saying that, uh -huh. I'd like to add the storyboard that we had. Yeah was actually storyboarded to the old location. Oh, yes, it was, yeah, because we'd gone to the old location as well. Yeah. So we had to <laughs> use that storyboard on this new... In this new yeah. location that we'd visited, like, literally... The day before. The day before. Yeah. And we're like, awesome, this is so good, thank you. So, yeah, there would be a few production changes that we'd yeah. do, especially shot-wise. Yeah, there were. Um, there was... Um, but then, considering that we had literally, like, this was you know a savior in a way yeah we had to work with what we had what we and it's a for shooting it's a great it's a great room yeah it, it turned out really really good there's a couple things i would have done so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna try and start the screen recording quick okay so one of the things that i like looking at it uh i would have done very very differently is of these original shots that we did, these are some of the first shots that we did in the in the music video. Was the doubles takes? Yeah. Um, just going through and seeing. Yeah. All of these are incredibly well lit. Now, in my day job, I'm a video producer, um, and my kind of subject matter is always well lit and always kind of more along the corporate line. Coming into the more artistic and theatrical stuff. I can actually see myself through this uh, shoot, and I was even saying it on set that I uh, I wish I would have lit the shots darker or differently. Lit the shots darker. Wait, you, you, <laughs> so like if you if you look at the, like the guitar slammer here and stuff, like the single light behind, that's really really dark. This shot, I mean, like looking at the waveform of it, you could see like how low all the color information and all the luminosity is here apart from the one light where it goes to 100% bright, yeah? Yeah. When we look at this, look how more even that yeah. shot is lit. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying about, especially the close-ups, let's say on like guitar. So doing this with a silhouette, which we like doing, that's, <clears throat> that's a usual call out to us doing that like backlit silhouette kind of thing. Um, 
where is it? There was some, it's slow-mo art, uh, band slow-mo, isn't it, when we did the, oh, look at that as well. You see what I mean? Bright. It's very, very bright. Um, which we made work, and I could pull it, pulled it back in color correction because of the way that we shot the music video and what sort of profile we shot in. But something like this was like, I was really, really proud of. Um, even like <laughs> this is probably my favorite shot of the video. Really? Um, yeah, because look at that bouquet in the back, the background, man. Yeah. Like that's really nice. So why don't I? I don't know. It, this might crash everything, but why don't I actually load up the project and we can look at the video itself? Oh dear. Oh, very dear. Yeah, which I haven't done this since we put it out. So <laughs> let's see main projects. This might break everything. If it doesn't, uh, oh, spinning wheel of death. There we go. So ah, uh, there we go. It's loading. It might need to render some parts, but we'll kind of see as we go. So, um, yeah, talking about like the guy, I think we really lucked out with, um, hang on, let me just uh, stop this from rendering quick. Turn off background render, there we go, cool. Right, so we knew that we wanted to go for a, not as filmic a look as, um, Return of the Mac, because we were intentionally trying to... Our inspiration for that was Tatooine, Star Wars, New Hope. Um, like, wow, kind of. Yeah, that kind of, like, the old film stock that they used for that, it's very um, orange. Yes. Is that what was what we were going for? So for this one, we went a bit more, like, blue uh, on everything. So you're seeing the, the dark patches in this shot here, were they incredibly blue. I really like that shot really like it like some of the stuff in here we did really well but then so my point of talking about when we look at something like this shot it's the you light dark by doing like the orange highlight up front and then the blue as the backlight those more artistic shots I wish I did more of um, which we I think we included most of the ones that we kind of did like even that lollipop shot, man, is just mm. like some of the the ideas that we had for this shoot were, were really good. Yeah. But um, what I would have done differently is I would have absolutely lit things a bit more bravely than I yeah. did this time. Because but I don't forget how dark the room was itself. Yeah, and it was not something that I was used to as a cinematographer because as my work has always been l like well lit corporate environments, and and it has been for years. So coming to something like this, I may have, should have prepared a little bit more to do shots like this, but I think the shots that we ended up getting were great, incredible. Now, the other part that I want to talk about is the, um, all the cologne area stuff. I made the, the decision when coloring um, to, you look at cologne ads, and we did this primary research before we, um, when we were doing the storyboard, is we were looking, um, at how they shoot cologne ads. And the resounding thing that we found was that they were always presented to look more gold than anything else. Well, on, on some of them. Yeah. I can think of one or two that didn't do that, but a lot of them wanted to um, exude luxury. Mm. So when we were doing the, um, the photo shoot scenes, um, we were, made the decision that it was going to be a lot more gold. But we still have, like, you know, you can see the, the blue um, backlight there casting onto the guy as well as the orange at the front. Mm. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, when I talk about doing it bravely, I think it really worked because we were able to shut the color off on bits like this. Yeah. But, like, this is what the original shot looks like. And then the jump between having to do all the color in post was massive. And, of course, it's not going to look the same as when you do it, like in real life, like this shot will, you will never get that shot to look like how this does, like in, in post. There are some mm. things that you can't fix in post. No, but that is a great shot. Yeah, man. Of the microphone. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, that's what I mean about being able to do this a bit more bravely. Um, mm. I would have also, like looking at it, I know we didn't want to scratch the floor there, but I would, looking back at it, I would have probably asked you to not have your mat there. Would but then you can't. It would have. My kit would have just been moving constantly. Yeah. 
I think we need to get you a better looking one. <laughs> Why? I don't know, man. I just don't, th well, I don't think that fit the aesthetic as much. You know, like the big sort of like um, Arabic rugs that we can, oh, Tom are, do are doing one for 120 pounds. Mm -hmm. It's insane. I'll stick to my minor one and work on that sponsorship. Yeah, man. Oh, was it minor? Was well, that who were doing them? No, no, the one I currently have is, is a minor one. Ah, right, okay. Yeah, because you do like them quite a lot. I do. I mean, <laughs> symbols. Yeah. So, like, talking about the colour and stuff for this video. Oh, we need to talk about um, how we did this. Yeah. Basically, uh, we cloned Will. Yeah. Well, we didn't. We did. Um, so, when we did the, the shots where both the guy and the singer appear at the same time, um, was... We had to do those shots as one entire long take. So let me see if I can find... This is going to break it. everything. I don't it? think it will. Match shot. I think this is it. Yeah, there we go. So as you can see here, <laughs> um, we had to mask. Um, how we did it was with an animated mask, we could cut between the two shots happening. And for some reason that mask is broken, but we didn't end up using that <laughs> shot as the, the way in anyway. We used a different one. Yeah. But like talking about this, we can see what we had to do is have one person, or one, one will, be in one costume first. Costume. Well, it is what it is, man. That's yes. what it is. Um, and then... That's some man's attire. That is, that is some man's attire. attire. Um, we, should actually, we should say who that man is. No, let's let it be a mystery. All right, okay. Uh, there is there is someone who wasn't a guy in the club bathroom who was the inspiration for the outfit of our guy. Literally, there's mannerisms and like so <laughs> character traits. Yeah, yeah. Of, of this one person. This this one person is a good friend of ours, and um, we based the character off of him. So there's there's some stuff like there's a line I say. Yeah. In the shouty shouty part. And there's like gestures of finger wags, which he always does, and yeah. you know, the clothes, which is now right? our thing as well. And we we do that all the time. Well, we sort of stole it. Off. We did steal it from him, yeah. And then turned it into a music video. Yeah, we did, we did. But the um, so how we did this clone shot was you can see um, there is a tennis ball in uh, on a stick, pretty much on on a light stand. And basically, what's that? That's for is to allow the actor to draw their eye line where the other person should be. So I had that on both sides. So if I get rid of the mask layer on this top layer, you can see that we did it both way around. Yep. So that I'm staring directly at this tennis ball on this stand so that we can cut in um, the other person. Now the difficulty that we had with this is we needed to animate this mask um, so that the shadows back there could overlap onto different parts of the scene. So that was kind of cool. Um, and we did that. And um, what else was kind of fun from this music video? I think um, it was the way we framed a lot of um, having both of them in the scene is like, I went with the, the classic sort of like Shakespearean sort of like the villain on the left and the hero on the right. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we filmed, like, we framed it in that way. And we also framed it a lot of the time. We used wide-angle lenses. I mean, the star of the show does appear in that one frame there. Yeah, you did in this shot, yeah, because the, the door is already open. Um, so what we did with framing it like this and why we framed it with wide-angle lenses in between was to convince the audience that both people were in the scene um, but both people were a very distant point of views. Yeah. So I think it worked. Yeah, I, I think it worked really, really well. Like, in between the cloning, because we didn't have to do every single shot. Did you say in between the cloning? Yeah, <laughs> did. Well, yeah, but in between the clone shots, we didn't have to do loads of different clone shots to make you be convinced as an audience that there were two of me acting two different parts. Like, yeah, the clone shots work, especially looking at Austin Powers and, like, all those films that Mike Myers does. Yeah. Um, where he plays multiple characters. But the, the way we could frame it like that, we could convince the audience that there were two people having an argument, being, especially using the wides to show the distance between their two different points of view. Yeah. Um, 
And this was our first, like, scene that we'd done. Yeah. That, that we'd done. That, that we have done um, in a music video. And I think there's going to be more. I think we're definitely going to do more for next time. I have such huge hopes and aspirations for the next oh, one. Oh, I'm so excited, man. I'm so excited. Just, uh, yeah. But yeah, just skipping through, like, looking at the, the final result. Like, we got some apps. I'm oh, sorry, I'm just checking that the camera's still rolling. It is. I'm just checking that we're not picking up your Mac about to take off. Yeah, it, yeah. It wants to render this. That's why the fan's going. It's like, it's ready to, like, get cooking. Oh, man. Just, like, look, like, some of the shots were that we caught. Like, especially, let me show you what this looked like without the color. Is It looks dead and flat on set. And you're like, Ugh, okay, is that really gonna work? But then you're like, bam! It just like the, so good. the color just helps pop all of this stuff and helps you like live in this world. Um, and when I color shots, is coloring is the last part of the edit process. Is I always have a reference frame up of somewhere else in the music video, and is like, I always have to ask myself this question: Does this shot? look like it belongs in that world yeah and if the answer is yes cool then you can move on if it's no then you got to go back to it so um there wasn't oh this shot at the end we actually used a, a gold reflector at the end to make it yeah. seem like a setting sunset well it wasn't a setting you can tell it's not a setting sun but well, yeah, but like it's like one of those things that you just see is like it's framed up in a way that it feels like it's a sunset going in, and the way that we do the vignette closing in, I'm I'm really proud of that shot at the end. So hey, look, it's us doing the exact same thing as what we're doing now. <laughs> so there you go. So uh, Nate, do you have any kind of like closing thoughts? Anything you would drastically do differently? Any? Um, maybe not cut my hair before the music video is released. <laughs> You know what um, that means, dude, is that we have to put all the shots that we had originally done for But This Time of Passion. I don't know, because we've got another song, song coming out for this EP that's our next single that still isn't But This Time of Passion, and you're gonna, we're going to have to do another photo shoot. Yeah, well... Uh, we're going to have to do another photo shoot. Well, well, we'll see. Okay. Well, if it's in character, then... Then yeah, I'm well up for that. Okay. Just I'm gonna need to clean my shovel. <laughs> I can't wait. Um, I think I, I've hit all the points of things we would do differently. Definitely record the vocals to the tracks when we're demoing instead of last. Um, do it during the de do it de the do it during the demo process. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> That's some alliteration, isn't it? <laughs> uh, uh, be more brave with shooting dark. Yeah. Um, we actually shot a lot of the video in HDR, but down converted it into a regular color space so that it helped get exposure in dark environments, which that really helped. Mm. Um, what else? Maybe um, secure location and uh, an extra yeah. camera person. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, something that we are currently working on now is securing a camera person and then starting the whole writing process for the next music video. Yeah. So... I kind of like the the film theme, if that makes sense. Of, yeah. You know, like the rom-com thing for freshen yeah. up and the next one, which is... A surprise. It's a surprise. But it's a, basically, if you could think of any film genre for me, what would it be? And it's that. Oh, I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. I know it's not Korean drama. <laughs> and I think on that bombshell, <laughs> I think it's time... But we could do one really well. <laughs> a bombshell? Uh, no, a Korean drama. Okay. Anywho. Um, Any let's stop the screen recording. There it is right now. I will save this, export as 4K. Um, uh, directors. Com. I do this from now so we don't lose that file. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Directors com. Freshen up. Uh, project drive. And. 
can save it in there. Oh, there was one last thing that we need to do whilst that's doing. It's not going to affect the, the thing at all. But, Nate, I want you to guess how big, by the end of the edit process was, how big Freshen Up's data was. 1.57 terabytes. That's really low. That's lower than your last guess. Um, it's a lot. I know it's a lot. It's a hell of a lot. I believe it is. It is two. Yeah, no, sorry. I, I was incredibly low with yeah. 1.5. 2.56. 2.56 2. 2. terabytes. So I was literally the one out. I got the five, and then that's so why I said 1.57. I knew it was something like that. Yeah, I'd say I'm pretty close. Yeah, that, that was pretty close. But granted, it's a terabyte out. I'm grind. I think yeah, I'm pretty close. I mean, yeah, there's a thousand gigabytes there, but you know, it's. I'm still close. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess on that bombshell. Check out Lordy's new album, by the way. It comes out on the 31st of January. If it's if this isn't out by then, if it this is probably honestly, it is such a good album. It's they've written a whole new album. Written all the, all the songs are new, but they've done it as if the band has been around for like 40, 50 plus years. And they've recorded songs of authentic instruments and on analog and shit like that. And it's just amazing. Check it out. It's not for your casual listener, but listen to it in full. They've done it so it's like a radio show. Oh, okay, that's kind of cool. So it's it's, it's really, like a concept album. It's kind of, yeah. It's, yeah I it's, can get it, behind it's that. It's a fictional compilation album. All right. It's called Collection. Uh, check it out on all good uh, music streaming websites or buy it because there's some really good deals on. Yeah. Um, but speaking of things that you should really be checking out. Ooh. I don't know if, if who has made it all the way through this video and has not heard Freshen Up, but for some reason, if you haven't, and you're just really into listening to two guys talk about film production for a while, um, why not check out Freshen Up on all good music streaming services right now? And hey, you can listen to all of our other songs on there as well, too. And then in the future, you'll be able to hear the whole EP, the whole new EP, yes. and then the EP after that. Yeah. And then the B-sides. Nate, can you not? It's <laughs> 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 a maniacal laugh. <laughs> Um, there's there's got to be something else that we we need to plug. Gig. Oh yes. Well, it, depending on when this is going. Oh, it's probably next week. Okay. So, um, if you're watching this before the seventh of February, well, on the seventh of February we are doing a gig. We are playing at the Loft on Albert Road in Portsmouth. Um, it's a wine theme, and why don't you come along, get a free lay with entry, and come along and jam along to freshen up with us uh, for the single release party. And just chill, have a good time. There's other good bands playing as well. It's not just us. So it'll be a lovely evening. Yeah. Uh, can we do social media plugs? Can you say we're at a rocket complex on stuff? Also, if you really, really want to stay in touch with us, come and see Sabaton with me in London <laughs> the following day. <laughs> <laughs> No, oh, of course, if you want to stay in touch with us, we are on all the socials of the media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, at, and at, at Instagram. We yep. are on Instagram. Yep. Uh, at A Rocket Complex. Also TikTok now. I started one of those. I'm, I'm still learning it. We got 330 views on me explaining about color theory. Really? Yes. Wow. So I'm... TikTok, that's a lot. Yeah, TikTok, that's a lot. So we're going to be doing more on there as well. So... Well, he will. I, I won't. Yeah, because Nate has a day job. I, I do have a day job, and I, I have a bit I of am. extra time. Yeah, suited and booted. Suited and so I don't eat shit. Yeah, you, you do booted. have. Well, there, you, there you are. Yes. All right. I Anyhow. think that's it. I yep. think that's all the stuff we have to plug. So thank you so much for watching, and we will catch you next time. See ya.